Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I've still got the remnants of a sniffle, so I have my hanky to hand in case it gets too much, but I'm fine. <coughs> Says she having a cough. Just a bit of a summer cold, but it's on its way out now. And I can't believe it's the end of another month already. This month has absolutely whizzed by. It kind of, it kind of scares me sometimes how how fast time goes. Um, yeah, it's absolutely whizzed by. And compared with the end of last month, oh my goodness, I couldn't feel more differently. Oh, it's brilliant. Properly in my positive place again, I properly have my mojo back. It's fantastic. And I thought in sort of, in the last couple of days, as it gets towards the end of each month, I always think about how that month has been and, you know, a little bit about what I'm gonna, ooh, just wiggling my legs around the tripod, what I'm gonna chat to you guys about. And I thought, bear with me a sec, um, peppermint tea gorgeous with a little touch of honey in it just on my nose um look i've waffled already and digressed yeah i just thought um you know when i sat here a month ago chatting to you all oh, i was in a really horrible place not a horrible place in my flat but in a horrible place here i think a lot of it was <clears throat> because we just had that ridiculously enervating heat for weeks and weeks and weeks on end and oh you know I know a lot of us <laughs> suffered with it and it just utterly drained us and I think that draining makes us um, less robust in terms of other things but obviously I talked a little bit about um, some of the negativity that had been going on in terms of words other people were saying. And it had really gotten to me. Um, well, as you saw, it's, the first thing I should say is thank you so much for your response. You guys were absolutely amazing. And that, your comments alone in the first 24 hours massively bolstered me, massively lifted me up. It was brilliant. But what I did in the end, um, after I put the video out and I'd sort of seen your comments in the first sort of 24 hours or so, I actually just completely turned my computer off for a couple of days. I left it alone completely. And I went back to some old habits I used to have, which have really helped. Um, so I spent some time doing some meditation that was really, really special, really important for me. Just some really, really quiet times, sort of just coming back to my centre, if you like. But I also spent some time with really, really good friends. Old friends, friends from years and years and years, friends who know me really well. The kind of friends that know me well enough to give me a little kick up the bomb to say, right, come on, stop it, you're feeling sorry for yourself, get on with things but also good enough friends to just sit and listen, just be with me, give me cuddles, that sort of thing. It's so important to have friends in life. I don't know where I'd be without my friends. So that was really, really brilliant. Um, and also not just my sort of really good close friends from years and years, but also my friends are part of the community on my allotment site. I don't know, there just seems to have been... It just feels like there's a, there's a change there in them. Everyone seems really happy and buoyant and I just embrace that culture of community, of people working together and, and sharing and cooperating and helping. And it's so, so, so wonderful. I, I think one of the things that helps me in life is when you give of yourself but don't expect anything in return, that act of giving actually makes me feel better. 
So for instance, if I, I've not got much to give in terms of, I can't give swanky, gorgeous presents to people. I don't have the money to buy them. But there's a few things I can do. I can give people, you know, a few spare veggies. I can give someone some spare seeds or spare plant. But most importantly, I can give my time. And I absolutely love to do that. But what's remarkable, and I just, I never get over this, when you give but expect nothing in return, then when something comes back, it feels even more wonderful. So this month, I've really had that sense of, if you like, what goes around comes around. And I feel, over the course of this last month, I feel so supported by the folk on my allotment site. Just little things like someone giving me their spare courgettes. Yay! <laughs> Every day, spare courgettes. Um, someone giving me just their time of day for a conversation, like as you'll have seen in the um, previous video about the vegetable dyeing. How lovely, how lovely that that plot neighbour shared her time and her knowledge and her experience with us. I just absolutely love that. And it makes me, it makes me feel full up. It makes me feel full and good and it's so positive. And just this morning, I'm going to show you, I've just had, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out in this, this container, isn't that cleverly done? There's a couple of plants in here. So this is an old water bottle that's been cut and then sort of shrunk down to hold them. One of these is one of those, um, uh, it's like a perpetual kale. I'm not quite sure, I'm going to have to do some research. But again, just a simple little gift out of the blue can... Ah, oh, it's so special. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is... Um, <clears throat> I think generally I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. And by the end of last month, where had my positivity gone? It had just vanished. And part of that is my own fault. And it's my own fault because I let all the negative stuff take over. I gave it headspace. <sighs> this is quite hard to articulate. articulate. I think, um, was it Gandhi said something along the lines of, I will, ne I will not let you walk through my mind with your dirty feet or something like that. I'm sorry I've got that quote wrong, but it's something along those lines. And in those couple of days after that video at the end of last month, when I kind of just took time out just to meditate and what have you, I realised that what I was doing was I was giving my time, my emotional energy, my headspace, I was giving it over to all the negative stuff. So again, it's another old habit I had years ago. Um, I put an elastic band on my wrist. It's a well-known little trick. But what I did was literally every single time one of those thoughts was entering my mind, I'd snap the elastic band on my wrist just to kind of give myself a sort of literal physical jolt out of it to say to myself, no, do not give that person or that negative situation, do not give it time in your mind. That person is merrily getting on with their life. You're the one who's sitting at home dwelling on it and thinking about it and giving it, like I say, that kind of headspace. So, um, it's, I think it's something which is, it's kind of habit forming as well. So for about two or three days, I became aware that, I mean, it was every few minutes, a, a, it was, stuff was popping into my head and I was starting to think about it again. And every time it happened, I'd stop myself and think, right, think of something really, really positive. Think about how well the squash have grown this year. Think about how well my friend's baby is growing. Think about, you know, how well a friend is doing at university. Whatever it is, stop that negative thought and straight away focus on something really positive. <clears throat> What's quite hard in 
those first few days is to focus on something positive about me because I started to feel really quite down. But even after a couple of days, I could focus on, I could sort of say to myself, you're doing really well this year, Vivi. You're managing, whatever it is. This almost sounds a bit quack and daft to some people, but um, look, all I can say is it really, really works for me. And I would say that honestly, in the last two weeks or so, I just haven't given any space to any of that nonsense. It's just all happy thoughts. That's not to say I'm looking at life through rose-tinted spectacles either. You know, I am a realist. Um, there are still things on the horizon which are, are tricky, shall we say, but it's more, a, it's more to do with that thing of, for the majority of the time and the majority of each day, I don't allow those thoughts to creep in and take over. And if they start to creep in, I kind of see them creeping up and I say, no, I'm not having you. I'm not having those thoughts. Be gone. Because ultimately, they do absolutely nothing for us. So cheers to much happier thoughts. By the way, to like my mug, it's my Smith's mug from another friend. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's, it's almost simple. Replace the negative thought with a positive thought. Get my mojo back. Also, I'm sure the change in temperature has helped. Wowzers. I was getting nothing done in sort of June and July because I was just so hot. My little cottage in the sky here gets so hot in the summer anyway, in an ordinary, ordinary English summer. But with this extra heat, most days, it was it was getting up to about 40 degrees in the flat. I don't have air con, I don't have fans. <laughs> it was just insufferable. So this month, things are more normal in temperature. And I'm getting loads done. It's fantastic. I, it's literally like I closed the door on all that in July, opened a new door and said, right, go through this door and have a good adventure. So, um, <clears throat> worked really hard and finally my whole little shop is online. Yay, and that's doing okay. It's kind of ticking over. It's not gonna make me a millionaire, <laughs> obviously not, but it's something I enjoy doing and it's bringing in, oh, it's just a few extra quid. Like I said, it's not gonna be, it's not a retirement fund but it's just a little bit extra so that I've got some there just in case I need something more than I can provide from the garden. And that's a big thing this year, or sorry, this month, because I've just booked three different lots of train tickets for family visits over the next couple of months. And all my family live way up north so each train ticket has cost me best part of a hundred quid. Can you imagine it? Oh, so I'm really, really glad to be going off and seeing family and having these visits. I'm off up to my mum next week because she's just moved house. So I'm going to go and spend a few days with her, helping her to unpack and do things like high up things, which she can't manage because her knees are even worse than mine. But then, in fairness, she is nearly 30 years older than me, so her knees should be worse than mine. Um, so that'd be really, really great. But of course, it's cost. <clears throat> so I, I have had a few thoughts this month about, oh, have I been winging it a bit for the last 16 months since stopping having a wage? I have been winging it a bit. Um, I'm providing for myself, obviously, in terms of food but I can't live on food alone. I've done a few sewing jobs privately, which have brought in a little bit of extra cash, which I'm sort of trying to stash. Um, obviously, I made a load of bunting and that sold really well, so that was a good little lump sum coming in. <clears throat> and the great thing is now my shop is all sorted, I can get back to sewing, so I'm gonna be sewing, 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 sewing. Um, <clears throat> and it was, 
<clears throat> part of knowing that I had to get these three different lots of train tickets was was also part of the motivation to get my shop up and running because I really need a bit more coming in. And the other thing is, apart from the train tickets, I think I'm going to have to invest in a third freezer. It's crazy. It's great, but it's crazy. My two freezers are nearly full already. And if you think about it, I've got a load of beans to come, which won't be dried. They'll be, loads of them will dry, but loads of them will be frozen green. I've got tons more tomatoes to come. I've got peppers, oh, all sorts. And then, for instance, with the really big squash I'm growing, as soon as I cut into them, what I can't use, I'll need to freeze. And I was thinking, I actually do not have any more space for any more veg. What a great and privileged position to be in. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna to have to um, bite the bullet and buy another freezer. <laughs> and I was looking in my kitchen, which isn't huge. I was thinking, right, well, if I move all that up that way a bit, and if I move my desk down that way a bit, I could just about fit another freezer in. Yay. But that comes back to that money thing. So um, yes, I need to get a wriggle on and do loads more sewing to just generate a bit of income to buy those items with and um, the train tickets. And that's a sort of an ongoing lesson. Um, so I, I have my kind of bunch of savings that I left work with, which I've not really had to touch. And I don't want to because they are that's that's for real emergencies so for example if i wasn't confident that i could sew and make some money to pay for the train tickets i would just be saying to my family sorry i can't make it can't buy the ticket i've got no money i wouldn't want to be digging to my savings for it because much as i love my family and love visiting with them it's not an emergency so i do need to be kind of careful about that 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 money is definitely separate, it's definitely for emergency. I need to generate a bit more somewhere else so that I can have my little trips to see family and to buy my 17th freezer <laughs> next year. <laughs> I need a bigger house just for the freezers. So look, it's, the bottom line is, um, I'm back to being, I'm back to my positive self completely um that self didn't ever go away completely it just got a bit swamped and bogged down and i think if there's anything i want to share with you guys this month because i know that there will be some of you watching who there are times in life where you just feel utterly overwhelmed by your situation <clears throat> whatever it is whether it's you know a chronic health situation I I do understand and I empathize how chronic ill health can really 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 debilitate not just physically but emotionally mentally whether it's a chronic ill health situation whether it's whether it's family disharmony I know a friend of mine at the moment is really struggling with some family disharmony whether it's ill health of another member of your family, whatever it is, I know there are times when we get just thoroughly overwhelmed and we get, we just get bogged down and sucked down like a, literally like a, or metaphorically like a bog. We get pulled into this negative space, this, this, I think I described it last month, didn't I, of that spiral. Um, and I'm not saying that positive thinking can change a situation. I'm not saying that positive thinking can make you better from your health problem. But try it maybe. Just, just for a few days, try if you sense that you're starting to think negatively or starting to let someone else's words to get into your head. Be aware of it and just say to yourself, stop do something like change position, stand up, say the words stop out loud, put your elastic band on your wrist, whatever it is, to, to have a physical moment when you try to stop that negative thought from taking over. 
and try your hardest to think about something that's positive. I know that can be really difficult. Honestly, I do know it. Um, but I think every day there is something to be positive about, no matter how small that positive thing is, whether it's, you know, a beautiful sunny day, whether it's hearing that your friend's daughter has just graduated from uni with great grades or whatever it is. I mean, it can be just as simple as, um, you know, you go to buy your coffee and the person serving you gives you a really big, beautiful smile. So those are things that we want to grab onto, hold on to, think about, and all the other stuff. Imagine, um, what was it? Was it Monty Python? The opening sequence had that great big foot coming down and stamping. Imagine that. So next time you're about to have a negative thought, imagine that great big foot coming and stamping on the negative thought. Yay! Well, that's me being Pollyanna. And like I say, I do appreciate that some people are in a situation which, which is really, really, really tough. And you have my sympathy in that scenario, in that situation. But for most of us, for the most part, we can find something to be really positive about. And I'm starting my day being really positive about... Um, oh, I didn't even tell you what it is, did I? Did I? So there's a lemon-scented geranium. I love my geraniums. And I love the lemon-scented. My nan used to grow them and use the leaves in the bottom of a sponge cake to infuse the sponge cake with the flavour. And the other is this, um, it's called Taunton Dean. It's a kale, and I think it's a sort of perpetual kale. Um, I think it's one of those, you plant it and it's forevermore. I'm going to do my research, and I shall spend now, after I finish talking to you guys, I'll spend a happy few minutes, half an hour, an hour, probably a bit more even, online, looking it up, seeing how best to plant it, seeing what it wants, etc, etc. And I should be thinking of Jimmy as I do it. So thank you oh so much, Jimmy, and his wife, Jackie, who did all the packaging. Brilliant. So you see, positive breeds positive. There we go. That's the title of today's thoughts. Positive breeds positive. But it really does. And by the same token, negative breeds negative. So... Catch those negative moments, stop them, and try to replace them with something positive. <laughs> oh, I really have got my mojo back, it's great. Well, on that note, um, is there anything else that's going to catch you up on? There's probably loads, it doesn't matter. Um, I've waffled on for long enough. So I'm going to say cheerio to you all. I'm going to go off now and think about all the bits and bobs I need to pack to go off and visit with my mum in a couple of days. Uh, I should be quickly, before I go up to my mum, I'm going to my great aunt tomorrow, so I need to think about what I need to take for her. Um, what a lovely few days I've got coming up. I will see you all again really soon, I hope. Hopefully I'll have time to do a September tour of the garden before I go. But if I don't, and you don't hear from me for a few days, don't worry. I'm just off visiting with family, having a lovely, lovely time. I hope you all have some great days in the meantime too. Until I see you all again, <laughs> did you hear that big horn? Until I see you all again, please take care everyone and replace the negative with the positive. Take care.